So, uh, as we all know, Finland, as every other country in the world, needs more coders. And I'm sure all of us here at Slush can certainly feel the pain. So I won't spend much time talking about this particular challenge. But maybe just to throw one example out there. Uh, it's been estimated that all of us together here could hire anywhere between 7,000 to 9,000 new coders right now. And this figure is growing by thousands every single year. So it's a big problem. But I do not think it's the biggest problem. I don't think we should only be talking about the quantity of the coders. We should have also a discussion about like who is coding for. I think the bigger challenge actually is that we have this very simplistic view about who is coding for. We think that it's for these geeks, these math geniuses who are often boys. And unfortunately, because of this simplistic view, many, many people who would be amazing coders never even give it a try. To illustrate the size of a problem, try to imagine a world where all the books would be written by males. And not just by males, but a certain type of males. I mean, how many great books would not have ever been written in that type of a world? And that's the world that we're living in, if you think about uh, the, the software industry. So if I think about the coders at Supercell, uh, I think about coding very differently. For us, uh, coding is about creativity. It's about problem solving. It's about teamwork. I mean, no one, no single individual can bring, uh, develop these uh, products anymore. It's about working in team. And what really is, makes a great product is a great team. So it's pretty clear to me that uh, what we need is that we need more people from all walks of life to get into the coding. There's a massive, massive opportunity and potential here. And by the way, if we are able to do that, that would also help us solve the numbers challenge. So last year, I heard about this crazy idea on how to solve a challenge. So this photo is, is from a school in Paris. It's a coding school. It's called 42. It's been founded by a legendary local entrepreneur um, and philanthropist, Xavier Neil. And what's amazing about this school is that they have no classes. They have no books. And most interestingly, they do not have any teachers. Instead, people and the students, they learn coding by doing these very practical coding assignments together. They, instead of learning from teachers, they learn from each other. Also, what's very cool about this school is that uh, it's for everybody. Anyone can get in. You don't need to have a degree. What they have is this online test that measures your problem-solving skills, your logic skills, and your cre creativity. And if you do well on the online test, and anyone is free to try, then you get invited to the first phase of the school. So this school has been around for a, for a few years, and the metrics are unbelievable. As a starting point, half of the people who get in, they have no background whatsoever in coding. They can't code. Despite that, in a few years, 100% of these students get jobs from tech, get coding jobs. And probably like, what's even more interesting for this audience here at Slush is that 
30% of these people become entrepreneurs. Oftentimes, with the people that they met at the school and they work together on these assignments. It's really hard to describe the school if you haven't visited it, but my, sort of, when I walked in, my sort of own personal first impression was that I, like, wow, I've never felt energy and passion like this, at least not in a school, for sure. Uh, and it actually reminded me a lot about some events that we have here. It reminded me of slush. It reminded me of junction and maybe assembly that we have here in Helsinki. And, and certainly didn't feel like a, a, a school. And my immediate thought back then was that, uh, man, we just have to bring this concept to Helsinki. And then I started to talk, about, talk to Xavier about this idea. And, and he was so supportive and, and so helpful. And he actually like, offered all of this, all the software all, software, all the assignments, the curriculum that's behind the school. He offered all of those for us and actually for free. So I'm so excited to announce today that we are bringing this coding school to Helsinki, and it will be called Hive Helsinki. If you love finding patterns, If you want to fix what's broken. If you're ready to rewrite the world. Then let's set you on the right path. know code, if you don't know code yet, if you want a school that's like no other, if you want a future-proof career, if you can dream it, then you can code it. Hi, Helsinki, the code school. You may be thinking right now, like, why, did, why on earth did we decide to call it Hive? Well, to us, Hive is this place where young people from all walks of life can get together, they have a common goal, they wor work towards it, and they learn together. Like, they, together they form a movement. And uh, it's just a bigger thing than just a school. It's, it's a movement. So uh, how are we going to do this in practice? First of all, uh, we will form a foundation, a non-profit foundation. Uh, Supercell will be funding that for at least for the first five years. We've estimated that it's going to be an investment of roughly 8 million to 10 million euros for us. Uh, and then later on, we hope that uh, uh, our companies and also the public sector, perhaps after that five years, also joins us uh, in, in funding the school. Uh, the online test will go uh, live in January next year, and then the school will open in August. And as a first phase, we are going to take in 100 students, and obviously the, the goal is to scale it way further as we go along. The one thing that I really want to emphasize here is that I, I would hope that people wouldn't see this as a supercell uh, initiative. I mean, we did not form this school to be able to hire new game coders for ourselves. Like, for us, this is a kind of philanthropic effort. Uh, and how we would like to see it is that this school belongs to everybody. It really belongs to the whole community uh, for all of us here. And uh, that's why we also wanted to uh, set up the independent foundation. And obviously, the foundation has also an independent board. And just so happy to introduce you to the board. And it's amazing the type of people that they got in. Uh, 
starting from a chairwoman, Linda Liukas, who I don't believe needs any introduction for this crowd. We have Jaakko Lehtinen. Many of you guys would know him from Aalto University, from MIT, from NVIDIA. Uh, we have Drusilla, who's the super salary representative, bringing in the industry perspective, and especially the creative industry perspective, a long-term gain development veteran who's done an amazing, amazing job in leading this initiative at Supercell. And then finally, we have Petteri Koponen, a serial entrepreneur and investor from Lifeline Ventures. Again, a very familiar face and name for many of us, us here. As I said, uh, the school belongs to all of us. And, and I, I'm just so, I've been so thankful about the number of people who've been helping us to get the school started. And uh, just to give you an idea, here are the companies who've already signed up as partners. And what they will do is that they will offer internships for the students. And we've also uh, been very, very happy about the support and the cooperation with the city of uh, Helsinki. And just being just so, so humbling to see the kind of amount of support from all around, to, from all the people we've talked about this initiative. Uh, and to give you an idea uh, about the people uh, who, who've been like uh, helping us and, and who've been around this, let's look at, at this quick video. There is a high demand for skilled coders and this demand is increasing all the time. That's why we must invest in technology and coding education in Finland. Well, first of all, Hive is a proven concept from Paris and the Silicon Valley and other locations already. But why I think it's a particularly good fit for Finland is that we have a grassroots hacking culture that's old and thriving already. Hive is a completely new way of rethinking how education should be done for, uh, for the coders, for the creatives. And I find it really gratifying to see that it's finally landing in Finland. We need diversity in coding because coding is a tool to create things and to solve problems. And every individual is unique and comes with a unique background. So we need more different kinds of people trying to solve different kinds of problems. I wish Hive will show how computer science can be a magical way of exploring and understanding the world. I think the biggest misconception we have about computer science that is that it's about studying the computer, whereas in reality, computer science can be used to solve the big problems in the world, those of energy or education or nutrition or health. Well, there are a lot of things that I, I expect Hive to bring to Finland. But maybe one thing to point out here is that I wanted to rattle the way we traditionally think about teaching and education. And hopefully high will make people think and figure out new ways of complementing the old methods. So having a background as a, as a hobbyist and self-taught um, coder, I think the way Hive operates it really, really resonates with me. I've, I've had the privilege of, of working with incredibly driven people with, uh, who don't necessarily have the necessary skills from the start, but who have the drive and willingness to, to do what it takes and work together with others to, um, to make big stuff happen. And this is exactly the way Hive operates, and it really, really, um, it really feels good. I, I think this is exactly how things should be done. So I've said this uh, before, but I honestly believe that our community uh, is the strongest when we can set a common goal and then we, all of us work to go towards that common goal. And Slush, for example, would be a great uh, example of that. So it doesn't belong to any individual person. It doesn't belong to any individual company. It belongs to everybody. And I really hope that Hive could become like one such thing like, uh, that our community uh, owns. And I just want to like, express a like, huge, huge thank you to all the countless number of people and the companies who have been so helpful in, in getting this started. And I'd like to propose a big round of applause for all of these people. <laughs> so. Um, as you know, startups are all about people. It's all about teams. And I actually believe that, that the same is true about schools. 
Uh, and at this point, I'd like to invite to the stage two key people behind the school, uh, Linda Liukas, the chairwoman, and Minna Kivihalme, who's the school director. Let's welcome them on the board. So Minna, let's start from you. So you've had this amazing long career in the field of traditional education. And your previous job was running the computer science department in, in Hagahelia. So you've been actually teaching coding. Uh, so I'm curious, like, what on earth like, made you take the leap running a school that has no teachers? Aren't you a bit scared? Uh, well, I have had two things in my life, a working career that I'm very passionate about. And those things are education and coding. So when I first heard about this initiative, it was just before summer. And I had a chance to uh, 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 go, go into that uh, curriculum and, and all the stuff that there is in, in the 42 in France. And the more I read, and the more I read, I got more excited about the idea. And actually, I kind of didn't have any other choice than to take this leap of faith and joined this great initiative. But hey, seriously, Minna, like the school has no teacher, so I need to ask you this, like, what is it that you do then? Well, as a school director, I think that there is plenty of stuff that I need to do. But the most important thing is for me to be able to create an environment for the students to learn from each other, to support each other and mm. coach each other. It is actually a, a typical example of a, a classical peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning concept. So Linda, as I just said, you don't really need an introduction for this crowd, but you've known for these uh, books that teach kids uh, coding and, and get them to computers, and, and uh, you've been very vocal and active in, in getting girls in general to coding. So is Highway girls' school? No, it's, it's a school for literally everyone, all of the outliers, all of the misfits, all of the people who don't see themselves as computer scientists. And I think the question that kind of got me excited about Hive was the idea that what if Minna Kanth was a programmer? What if Armi Ratia was a programmer? What if Tom of Finland was a programmer? So I think Hive is all about finding those people who have a curiosity and creativity to change the world with code. So uh, what do you think about the fact that, uh, that uh, in, in high people will work on these assignments together. How important is that for you? Well, I think <laughs> you can't be a very good programmer unless you can work with other people. And we have these misconceptions about computer scientists only working with computers. But there is this really famous saying by a researcher called Edgar Dijkstra who says that computer science has as much to do with computers as astronomy has to do with telescopes. And I think that's what we're trying to show with Hive, that it's about learning to learn, not about learning one specific program. Uh, language, but learning like to think. Yeah, that's a great point. If I think about the, the best game teams that we have at Supercell, I mean, they're all filled with like these proactive doers who, uh, I mean, of course, they're great coders, like many of them are, mm -hmm. but then also it's, it's about those like team working skills and, you know, get, getting stuff done uh, as, as a group. So uh, I'm curious, Linda, like you visited the school in, in oh, Paris. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what did you think of it? So I walk into the school and I feel it's Hogwarts meets the Matrix. <laughs> and it's full of these like brimming, excited young people from all walks of life. And there's energy everywhere. And there's people working together, not alone on their computers, but actually in teams. And the pedagogy is actually, you'll talk more about that, but it's really hardcore computer science. It's not about like easy peasy things, so they were really concentrating well. And I got a chance to also meet some of the alumni of the school. So Paula, who was showing me around, she was talking about like her peers in the group and how and what kind of things they en went, ended up doing. And as you mentioned, there were a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of people who work at big companies, and most importantly, people who came from all around France, from different social economic uh, and social demographic situations. They came from all over Europe also, and that's what we also wish to see in Hive. So you've also been an active participant and member of, of our local sort of tech community and the startup community here. How do you see 
something like Hive like feeding into our ecosystem. Well, I think it takes a village to start a school, and Finland has, as you mentioned, been so good at starting these ecosystem projects. And, and yeah, I, I think Hive will be really beneficial for us to work together, but then also uh, the rest of the world is really anxious and curious to hear about the Finnish tech innovations within the gaming scene, but then also like other things we can offer, for instance, in the field of security. So building the curriculum together. Yeah. What was your reaction when you kind of saw we have a kind of number of companies and number of people who kind of wanted to like chip in and, and help here. <laughs> I feel like you have a lot of work to do for the next <laughs> five years at least. Probably, yeah. So, Minna, let's talk about from practical point of view. So, how does one get into the school? Can you talk a bit about the, the process? So, if you are between 18 to 30, you can apply. And first, you have to pass our online test, which is not easy. I tried it myself, and luckily I got in. <laughs> but you don't need math education to do that, so... That's true. Yeah. But, but ne nevertheless, it is not something that you do just like that. And after you got uh, the, this online test passed, then we will invite you to the piscine. And now I know that you are wondering, what does that piscine mean? Well, it's French, and it means swimming pool. And the next question probably is for you guys, what does swimming pool have to do with the coding? Well, uh, it is actually an entrance course. It takes four weeks, and during that we can see all those uh, students that are motivated enough, capable enough, and willing enough to get into the school without no teachers. Can you also talk a bit about curriculum? I believe we actually have a photo of it here. Uh, here. Uh, so to, to me, I remember like when I first time I saw this uh, this curriculum, like it reminds me of an, an MMO game or RPG game and the game map. But you know, can you talk a bit about this? Yeah, it does look a bit like a board game to me as well, and it is actually like that. You start from the same position. All all the students start from the same spot, and then they continue with the same projects at first because those projects are mandatory. But when you go on, then those options. Uh, sort of spread to you and you can choose the ways you, that you want to do your uh, coding uh, s studies. And uh, one uh, really cool thing is that uh, the curriculum, we can actually improve it ourselves I I from Finland. Uh, the, the France, they are very excited uh, to get Finland on board because we have so cool companies here like Supercell and we could uh, you know, create more projects about the gaming uh, gaming area, and we have, for example, F Secure, which is very a very uh, known company in the security area, and so on. Yeah, actually, I should add, like, you know, there's lots of countries, lots of cities, like, competing to get this school, and one of the reasons why Helsinki got it was well, is the strength of the ecosystem. So again, it's not about any one company, but it's the fact that they have this. NVIDIAs and F-Secures and, and other companies here who, who can actually contribute to that curriculum. So meaning that they can create more assignments for the students. And, that, and of course, we will then uh, give all of those assignments for all the other schools around the world as well, which are based on the same concept. So it sort of benefits the whole network. And I think that was one of the biggest reasons why we were able to like, sort of kind of jump the queue and, and you know, get in the pole, pole position here. Another example of how important this strong community uh, is. Mina, one more question to you. So uh, the other crazy thing, apart from the school not having teachers, is that you don't also get a degree. What are your thoughts on that? Yes, uh, actually the degree isn't the thing that makes you a good coder. Your knowledge and skill is what, it, what makes you a good coder. But uh, of course we do give you a diploma if you want that. And we give you a study transcript of, of the projects that you have accomplished. So in a way, it is about the diploma and study transcript. We, uh, you can prove your, uh, your capabilities and skills to your employer, future employer, by that. And one more thing that is probably uh, out of interest for you guys is that if those students that want to continue to a traditional system later on, uh, it is possible. Uh, they, it's, it's possible for them to to sort of uh, uh, get those degrees faster. It, it is because of of the uh, 
system that the traditional educations have and its uh, recognition of real learning. I know that because of my background in Hagahelia, and uh, Hagahelia is very good in that, uh, that perspective, like other, other schools as well. So it's about showing the skills you have learned and you get credit points out of that if you want to go to a traditional system. So everybody wins. But the one thing we need is trust from the parents. I think the young people in the room are really energetic and excited about jumping the chance to apply to the schools. But the parents in the room need to trust that this system works and that your kids, whether they want to be ballerinas or biologists when they grow up, they will uh, find these skills useful and employ, be employed easily and so forth. And this is a whole new way of teaching these skills. Mm. Uh, so spread the world. So unfortunately, it looks like we are running out of time. So maybe uh, the last question to both of you. So like, if you would need to sum it up in just one sentence, like, what does make Hive so groundbreaking? It answers a question we've been all asking for years, and it, do, it does it in a very pedagogically uh, fun and exciting and new way. And for me, it is uh, learning how to learn. That is the most important thing we can teach to our a youth. All right. Um, I want to close by asking everyone's help here. So uh, I said uh, the online test uh, will go live uh, in January. Uh, the website is open right now. And uh, if you're under 30, uh, you can apply. <laughs> uh, and if you're over 30, uh, the thing that you can do is that you can spread the word. I mean, let's work together to solve this problem, let's get more people into coding. Thank you very much.